Hey everybody, my name is Tommy, and today I'm going to show you how to plan a really fun road trip for relatively cheap. Yeah, yeah, uh... This video is going to have four parts. The first part is road trips that I've gone on and why they've been awesome. The second part is figuring out what you want out of a road trip. The third part is planning out the details of the trip. And the fourth part is tips for when you're actually on the trip itself. I was first exposed to road trips when I was a kid and my family had to move across the country three times. Uh, my parents also loved to travel and we had a month long road trip through Europe when I was 12. My first real road trip on my own was in 2018 when I was going to my youngster summer here at the Naval Academy. I took that trip with my friends Jake and Andre and you can see that trip here. So this trip started in Arlington, Virginia and then we went down to Clayton, North Carolina to pick up my friend Andre and then we shot across to Boone and then to Nashville, we spent the night at Shawnee National Forest, stopped in St. Louis, went to Chicago, and then Cincinnati, then Charleston, and then finally back to Arlington. In the end, this trip took us six days and cost around $550 each, $250 for gas, $250 for lodging, and another $50 for additional expenses. My next trip was the following summer here with my friend Jake again, along with a new friend, Bray. This trip was a little more complicated because it was over the course of 12 days and we couldn't use my car for it. For this trip, we started in Phoenix, drove through Sedona, went to the Grand Canyon, stopped in Monument Valley, stopped at Horseshoe Bend, went to Zion National Park, Bryce Canyon National Park, Fallon, Nevada, Lake Tahoe, Yosemite National Park, Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Park. And then finally, we stopped in Joshua Tree National Park and then headed back to Phoenix. In the end, even though this trip was 12 days, it only cost us around $725 each, with the bulk of that coming from the $375 plane tickets, another $250 for gas again, and $200 for food and lodging. The last trip I'll talk about is one I took during spring break last year, right before COVID hit. That trip is shown here. Uh, I brought back an old friend, Andre, and some new friends, Rachel and Rose, and we went to Rachel's home state of Washington. This trip was only six days. We started flying into Seattle, then to Olympia, through Portland, down the coast to Redwood National Park, and then uh, in Gold Beach, Cannon Beach, uh, up through Olympic National Park, finally back to Olympia. And finally, this trip only ended up costing us around $640 each, with 390 of that coming from plane tickets, another 100 from gas, and another 150 on food and lodging. So all this is just to show you that it's possible to plan awesome road trips relatively easily and at decent cost. These all gave me memories that I won't forget, closer friends, and a sense of fulfillment that I don't think I would have gotten if I had stayed at home. I'll be going through my own planning for a potential trip over basket leave this year, as we walk through these steps to give you a concrete example for your own trip. At this point, you're probably like, okay, enough about yourself, so we'll just move on to the first step. This means figuring out a few things, namely, when you wanna take the trip, where you wanna go, how long is it going to take, and who do you wanna travel with? For example, for my next trip, I wanna take after graduation. Um, in previous years when I've gone on trips, I've gone at the beginning or end of my leave blocks. So for this year on May 29th and ending 30 days later on June 28th. For my trip, I'd like to explore the central US because I haven't been in a while and I'd like to document it with some pictures and my road trip partners will remain secret for now. Figuring out who you wanna travel with is crucial I'd recommend traveling with four or less just so you don't get too cramped and making decisions is a little easier. Coordinating with these friends beforehand will help you plan the trip a lot faster and get you guys all on the same page and bought in. The next step is finding out your budget. For my previous trips, I would save in the months leading up to the trip itself, um, knowing that I'd be spending a little more that month. And last year in particular, I budgeted my tax returns that I got to be spent directly on the trip. So I'll be doing the same this year 
and saving a little more because I know that there's gonna be a lot more driving involved. Something a lot of people worry about is paying for these trips. So while $500 to $800 certainly isn't cheap, uh, an important thing to remember is that you're paying for the memories and I've never regretted a dollar I've spent on my trips. There's also a lot of ways you can cut out cost. Uh, in 2018, I was fortunate enough to be able to use my minivan Martha for the trip. And although Andre may have caused a little accident with Martha. Mm, look at this whip. Ooh, tied on. Ooh, also tied on. We were able to zip tie her bumper on, and to this day, it works just as good as new. You can also be frugal with your food purchases by buying more snacks at the grocery store rather than eating out. Another great way to save money is through space safe flights. So you can see from a lot of my other road trips that the most expensive part was the flight. Um, and there may be a solution to that depending on where you wanna go. Uh, it actually looks like we have a sponsored ad here coming in. For anyone who doesn't know what Space A is, it's also known as Space Available, and it's a service provided free of charge to military members. When there are military flights between bases, there are often seats that aren't being utilized. With the Space A program, military members and dependents are able to take advantage of those seats and hitch a ride to the destination. These flights fly both nationally and internationally on a daily basis. There are often dozens of seats that could be utilized and saving you thousands of dollars in tickets. This opportunity is open to anyone on active duty, retired, reservists, dependents, and RTC cadets. Like most things in the military though, there is a catch. These seats are not guaranteed, and there could be people who are higher priority in line than you. This is why you should also save up enough money in case your space A flight doesn't work out to buy a flight of your own, and schedule in time in the front end and back end of your trip to account for any differences. That being said, my family has utilized the program many times, and with seven people, we've never failed. Here are the keys to taking advantage of this opportunity. One, you have to be on leave when you sign up. So sign up as soon as you get on leave and then I'll put you higher on the priority list. There are six categories and active duty military is the third category. You can find the categories in the description below and the document linked along with more details. Two, ensure that you have proper travel documents like your passport and visas. Three, check on the websites below to see the terminals that offer space A travel. Four, check on the flight schedule of your terminal. I think this is the most important step. This can usually be done by looking up the terminal name on Facebook. If you plan on traveling back with Space A, make sure to check the terminal's flight schedule as well. At most, these will be updated three days in advance for security reasons. Checking the schedule in the months leading up to your trip will give you a good idea of the schedule and you can likely determine when you can catch the flight you want. The next step is to register with your terminal and you can find links on how to do that in the description below. It isn't too complicated. Then on the day of your flight, once you get to the terminal, you check in at the counter, you see if the flight time is still the same, and you wait patiently to see if it works out. If it doesn't, then you use your backup option, but it's all part of the adventure. And that's all I have, but check the description for a document that has links and more specifics. So in previous years, I've used Google Docs and shared the doc with my buddies and we've gone through all the days, put in the locations we want to go to and the details and use Google Maps to calculate the distance between them. Uh, but this year I'm going to try something a little different. I found an app called Wanderlog, which has a desktop version and a phone app and you can share your plan with your friends and they can edit it too and it does all the distances and times by itself. Before you use the app to put in the places that you want to go, you have to figure out the specific locations you want to go to. So from the general idea that you figured out earlier, um, you need to figure out a route along there at places you want to stop. Um, and the best way I'd recommend to find out places for this is just go to YouTube and look up a general idea of where you want to go to. Uh, look at blogs online, just do research that way. Um, to find out more specifics and start to build a route. I would suggest doing this with all the friends that you plan on doing the trip with. So I did a call with my friends while we were going through this and for a couple hours we just planned out all these locations, put them into the map and figured out what worked best. 
if you know any locals in the places that you're going to, reach out to them and see if they have any expertise on places you should go to near them, restaurants you should stop at, hikes you should do, and that'll also help you a lot. For example, on this trip, we'll be going through Colorado Springs, where I used to live when I was a kid. So I'm sure we have a lot of family friends out there that I'll reach out to in the coming days um, and see if they can hook us up with some ideas and maybe we could spend the night. So as you can see, you'll slowly start to fill in the days with locations as you put them into the map and you talk with your friends. So um, another thing to keep in mind here is how much time you're spending driving each day. So there isn't like some perfect methodical formula to find out the best amount of time to be driving each day. But I'd recommend if, if it's going to be a long day driving, probably seven to eight hours at most. Um, on my legs in this trip, uh, you can see I'm doing around eight, eight to nine hours just because I'll be alone on this part. Um, but then the other days when I'm with my friends and we really want to hike like in Yellowstone and Tetons, it's just over an hour. So finding that balance of what you want in the days um, is pretty important. I wouldn't recommend over three to four if you really want to take some time in these places. Um, and probably on a general day, I wouldn't recommend over six if you're going to be with other people because they're probably going to get tired of driving too. From my previous experience too, having longer days, um, you might be a little over ambitious in your planning. And what I've found is that when we have been over ambitious, we've ended up at the campsites at 10 p.m. or later setting up our, our tents with our car lights. If it's going well, you'll slowly start to see the trip plan out itself. And by the time you get to the end, you'll have to decide where you want to end the trip. Um, if you're using a rental, you're going to have to find a place to, to park the car and take your flight back home. For me, I'll be driving back to where I started because I'll be using my own car. At this point, you'll have all your locations in your map and you really just have to fine tune the details. So for me, that meant finding places to camp and save money along the drive and finding hikes to do in the parks that we were stopping in. But as you can see here, I use an app called Free Roam to figure out a good spot to camp um, for my first two overnights and uh, another app that you can use to figure out the trails that you wanna hike is All Trails. So you just look up the location that you want and from there, uh, it'll give you a list and you can see what you want with the difficulty and the distance and figure out your hikes that way. For the camping, I'd recommend uh, either making a reservation or calling the place to make sure that they'll be open on the day that you go. Uh, you don't ever want to end up at a place uh, pretty late in the night and find out that either all the spots are taken or the place isn't even open at that time of year. So making sure you have that before you take your trip gives you the peace of mind that you're not going to be sleeping in your car on the side of the road. Now for the fourth and final section. For this section, I could continue to talk your head off about what I think are the best tips um, for the actual trip itself. But what I'm going to do instead is bring in some of my friends that have taken trips with me and they'll give their best tips. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Jake. Number one, download some Spotify playlist. Uh, you're gonna lose some connection. You want your own type of music, uh, so you're not just listening to other people's too. I mean, it's gonna be good to explore your uh, different tastes of music, but definitely good to have your own. Uh, screenshot directions of where you're going because you might lose connection. So take a quick screenshot of Google Maps, get a solar powered battery pack uh, so you can charge when you're on those hikes. Uh, you're charging while charging your phone at the same time. Get a car charger that has two USB ports so you can charge two phones at the same time. Uh, definitely maximizing the time in the car. And tell people about your road trip when you're planning it, wherever you're going, because uh, you'd be surprised by how many like friends of friends are willing to help you out and give you tips and advice. And uh, just really be open to whatever they're suggesting. It This whole trip's about being open-minded on the open road uh, and just being open with each other. And honestly, it's a, such a great time for your uh, have like that open mindset bring hats for those bad hair days you're gonna have and keep the sun out of your eyes uh, and bring for breeze for the car because your shoes are still gonna smell 
And lastly, and most importantly, if anybody's from New Jersey, make sure that they're So here's some lessons I learned from the trips and something I'd like to know before I went. The first thing is riddles and stories. So it gets boring driving for a while sometimes. Some days it could be like seven or eight hours. Um, and you want to keep the driver in, in, entertained. Well, you can definitely learn a lot about it, everyone on the trip. After six or seven days, you've kind of gone through a lot of the same stories. So I'd recommend looking at riddles, different stories to tell the driver at least to keep people entertained. Layers would be my next tip. Bring like short sleeve, long sleeve, light rain jacket, heavy jacket. Um, the weather's gonna be unpredictable. Um, and some days it might rain, you not, might not be prepared. So definitely, definitely have some clothes so you can keep doing your plan for the day. Next thing would be to relax. Like you're there for fun. You're taking your chunk of leave to go do this thing. Like have fun with it. Um, be relaxed with the people around you. Don't get super stingy if something doesn't go your way or something or you don't get to see a certain thing you wanted to see or say you went, um, you drove for too long when you were supposed to only drive for like two hours, you drove for three hours, like relax. It's going to be all right. It's not the end of the world. And the last thing would be to remain open-minded. Like you're going to see a lot of different, like go a lot of different places, meet some different people, maybe try some new things, like have fun with it. Um, don't, don't be so kind of set in your ways, I guess. It's a good time to experience new things and just uh, see the country. Uh, America is a beautiful place, and I highly recommend everyone to do a big trip. When you pack for a road trip, you really don't need that many clothes. First off, you have to have at least one or two base layers, at least two t-shirts, at least two long sleeve shirts, and a couple outer layers, like a rain jacket, a sweatshirt, sunscreen, spray it on, rub it on your face. Don't forget it, don't be lazy. You'll be upset if you have to sit in a car the next day for six hours with the sunburn as the seatbelt is pushing against your skin. It's not fun. Make sure you also have proper like feet gear. So that means that you have at least one pair of sandals so you can easily put them on and off the car for stops, but also for showers along the way. You may be staying at a lot of campsites. You do not want to be wearing your bare feet in the communal showers. Also, make sure that you have proper hiking shoes or really supportive tennis shoes. Um, I prefer hiking shoes if you're going a lot because it helps with like ankle stability. So that can be really helpful. Also make sure you have a constant water supply. So whether that means that you have like a big couple gallons of jugs of water or just a few water bottles laying around, making sure you always have water in case you get into any emergency which situation is very important. Make sure that you really never go less than a half tank of gas or a quarter tank of gas, especially if you're traveling through a place that you don't really know about. On our road trip, we got stuck on Highway 50, which is the loneliest highway in America, almost ran out of gas. And that's no fun for anyone. Um, I say like the biggest thing also is just remain flexible. If you see something cool that you want to go to, like you see a road sign, it says detour like 10 miles off the road, like go take go take the trip. Like whenever, when are you going to be like stuck in a state you've never been to? It's okay to stop, to deviate from the plan a little bit. Unless you have a real time hack that you're trying to make, be flexible. Like it's it's a fun time. Life's fun. Go out and do cool things. So number one, I would say definitely shower after you go in a hot spring. That is disgusting. You don't want to get sick or infected or just like all those little nastinesses. Um, number two, definitely bring a bunch of extra clothes unless you're going to be like cuddling up with all of your boys or your girls, whatever you're doing. I wore like four pairs of pants and three sweatshirts to bed every single night. And then tip number three, don't be afraid to go off like the beaten path to deviate from your like exact route because sometimes the best times are when you just like pull off on the side of the road and like see this really cool like place where you just like look something quick up off, off your phone. So definitely do all those like little things because that's what's going to make the trip better than just like being like, okay, we're going here, here, here. Peace. always have an emergency sleeping plan for us it was a suburban but whether it's a hotel or your car just make sure there's a place you can stay if the weather is really bad eat out eat at the restaurants you know you can plan ahead meals and bring everything you need with you but you'll see a lot of the local 
flavor and enjoy places more if you eat at the local restaurants. Be open to new adventures, stop on the road, see what's there, enjoy new towns. You're gonna have a lot more fun because road trips are more about the journey than they are about the destination. Reserve ahead if you really wanna go to a certain campsite. We did this in the Redwoods and it was super worthwhile and we never would have been able to just drive up and take this campsite. So if you know you wanna go someplace, plan ahead and make that your destination. My next tip is to buy items for every situation. So if you need layers, if you think you're gonna go swimming or if you don't think you're gonna go swimming, bring a swimsuit, have sunscreen, just be ready to encounter every situation. We ended up going to a hot springs and none of us had towels or swimsuits because we didn't expect to go swimming or be taking showers over the week long road trip. Always having emergency meals and water planned out just in case you end up with a place with no grocery store or a restaurant in sight. And then my final tip is just to focus on the journey, take pictures in the small moments, enjoy the car ride. If you're with really good friends or if you're people you barely know, you're going to love the experience and you're going to see cool places in a way you never would have um, doing any other type of trip. And that's all I've got. I hope you found this video informative or at least maybe a little entertaining. Uh, this is my first time doing video in this style, so I hope it was at least decent. It took me a lot of time, but I appreciate you watching, and I hope you plan a trip yourself. Let me know what you do. Thanks.